Hi again, it's Jim here with some Infinity tips for your Unity characters. I'll start with bringing in some free animation packs from the Asset Store, and then we'll fix the open jaw problem that often happens with character animations. I have a few other tricks for realistic eyes and skin, so check the chapter titles for what you might find useful. Before we look at animations, I've made some free realistic eye textures for you, and you can find them in the link below. Just click on the body of the character and drag the textures into the eye material. And if you appreciate me putting this kind of work into the videos, please subscribe and give us a like. We're trying something new in creating tutorials for the assets, and your support and comments help us know it's working, so thank you. Alright, let's import some animations for this character I have here. For this video, I'll be using Kevin Iglesias' free animation packs. And it's really cool he's given us so much free stuff to work with. I'll download and import those from the package manager. Then going into the human character, I'll delete the animation controller on the animator because I'm going to make one from scratch. In my own folder in the project window, I'll right click and go to create and then find animation controller. And then I'll click on that to make a new animation controller. Then I'll drag that onto the character and I'm bringing up the animator window so we can just start dropping in some animations. They're in Kevin Iglesias and whatever pack you want to use in animations. And then I'll just make it into a list view so I can see what they are. So it looks like we have some idle animations and some transition animations from one idle to the other idle. So I'll just bring those in. You can bring in the animation file or you can bring in the parent file. Either one will work. I'll go through the different packs and pick out a few animations that sound interesting. And then to connect up the animations, all you need to do is right click on a state and then choose make transition and select the other state. This way, the animations will play one right after the other in sequence. I'll press play and let's take a look. Uh... Yeah, so his jaw is open. This is a really common problem, not unique to Infinity PBR. I've had it happen on all sorts of models, and fortunately, it's really easy to fix. So I'll bring up the animation window, and let's preview some of the animations on the model. Now, when we scrub the timeline, the model is actually going to go to 000 in the world. Okay, so I'm gonna press F on the model to get to where the model is, where I have little diorama. <laughs> so he's not floating in the sky. And yeah, let's check this out. So jaw is open. And if you look at the animation, you'll notice that everything is grayed out and you aren't able to change any of the things on the keyframes. So I'm going to clear out all these animations from the animator and go to the project window where these animations are. Okay, now there aren't any animations on the animator so that when we click the animations here in the project folder and we scrub, the character won't go to that default position. Okay, we can see that we can't click on preview, we can't move any keyframes around, and we can't adjust any of the values on the keyframes. Animations we've imported into Unity are marked as read-only. We can't modify any values on them, so what we need to do is duplicate this animation, then we have an editable copy of it. So just select the animation and then press Ctrl-D. Now things aren't grayed out and we have an editable copy, so I'm going to drag this into my Infinity Tips folder, and then I'll pick another animation to do, maybe Idle 1, since the first one we did was Idle 1 to 2. All right, I'll press Ctrl-D. Oh, and I wanted to show you that the original animation says read only on it, and the duplicated one doesn't say read only, and we can edit the values. All right, so I'll bring this animation into my folder, and then go into the folder, and then I'll bring the animations into the character's animator, just like before. Because I don't have the character selected right now, I'm actually scrubbing the animation from the project folder. If I select the character, then we're previewing it on the character at 000, so I'll press F to zoom to him and my little diorama. Okay, like I said, this is easy. All you need to do is find the parameter that's called jaw close. So there it is right there, jaw close. And with the playhead on the keyframe, just switch it from zero to one. Rump. <laughs> and the jaw is shut. Now bring the playhead to the last keyframe. So make sure you get it right on it or else you'll make a new keyframe. So there we are right on the last one. And then let's make this one. I'll select that and then type one. Okay, great. Now there's no open jaw. And then I'll just go into my second animation and do the same thing. I'll bring the animation in. I'll do the drop down and select idle one to two. Find the jaw close parameter on the animator. 
and switch the zeros to ones. And I think you could also delete the last keyframe if you wanted to. All right, I'll put those fixed animations in a folder. So if I want to change any more, it's clear to me what I've already fixed. Then I'll press play. And all right, he looks great. Okay, for the next tip, I'm going to bring in a female character. Then I'll uh, move her around and move her over a little bit. And then as one does, I'll press F to what? This is the much maligned Unity Zoom, where you press F and then you're in the stratosphere. Well, the reason this is happening is because our audio source, which Zoom should not pay attention to, our audio source, we can hear our characters out from a minimum of one meter to 500 meters. And that's why we're zooming back here. Um, in fact, let me bring up the gizmo. There you can see that sound area by which we can hear our character. So my best fix for this right now is to just go to the max distance and make it be something like 1.2. Then when you press F, you're somewhere reasonable. So I guess the tricky thing is you got to remember to set it back because you won't be able to hear your character probably. All right, next tip. Look at the difference in skin tone between this character and this character. The female looks yellow and orangey and kind of washed out. So I want to show you a really simple trick to fix the skin tone. So just go into the body and expand the body material and the head material. Albedo is the skin texture. So then click on this white color swatch and let's bring this over. Now click the eyedropper and click a spot on her, like a yellowy orangey spot. That is the color that we're getting right there. And if you want to balance it out, what you do is bring the color to the other end, the opposite end on the color wheel. Okay, so now she looks a little bit blue, right? But what we can do is draw down the saturation until it starts looking pretty good. So now that orange yellow is balanced out a little bit. So let's copy the hexadecimal and go into the head texture. Click on the color swatch, bring it over here and let's paste it. Okay, so now she's looking a little bit better. Let's bring up the saturation a little bit more. Okay, she's starting to look a little bit blue. And then of course you can move it and tweak it from there. If I were to bring her into Substance Painter with her skin texture, I'd basically be doing a fancy version of this. Now you might be saying, come on, Jim, you handsome guy. That's not that big of a difference. Well, let's check it out. So let's go into the body texture. So that's the before. And that's the after. Now let's check out the face. I think we should really notice it there. That's the before. And that's the after. Ah, pretty neat trick. And my final tip is an asset that I really love called Realistic Eye Movements. It adds a lot of life to your character, and you don't have to animate blinks. The setup for this asset is really easy. You just grab the eye and head animator script, put it on your model, and then you can see that there are some different parameters here. Nervousness of the eyes, some head control, blink time for eyelids. But what you want is the setup where eye control should be mechanism eye bones and eyelid control should be bones. Then enter a value of one into these parameters for the eyelid bones, and then you can drag the bones into those spots. The final step in this is a calibration. So we have eyes open looking straight. So you could just save that. Next is eyes closed looking straight. So then I'll do that. I'm finding the eyelid bones and then moving them so that they are blinked shut. And then you just go into that parameter and save it. Then I'll undo those rotations and then do looking up and save that and looking down and save that. By the way, I can see that the shadowing on my eye texture is a little bit too much. So I'll back off on that when I give you guys the free eye textures. Okay, at that point, you can export a file that will have all of this mapping stuff done so you don't have to do it again. And hey, check out how it looks. We should get a blank here pretty soon. Come on. Yeah, there we go. It's really nice to not have to animate those. So his eyes will sort of just dart around just like he's hanging out. All right, I hope those tips were helpful. I'll have the realistic eye textures in a link below. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.